Evolution of Hamiltonians formed by products of Pauli operators, quantum circuits and exact simulations. Evolution generated by some non-local Hamiltonians can be simulated exactly. Such a possibility occurs, for example, when a Hamiltonian consists of a tensor product of Pauli operators. Examples of such Hamiltonians are presented on a screen. And in this video you will learn how to construct a quantum circuit to simulate a Hamiltonian consisting of an arbitrary tensor product of Pauli operators. One qubit Hamiltonians. Let us start with the one qubit case. In other words, when a Hamiltonian is formed by one of the Pauli operators. This example is explained in detail in the video about the evolution under the action of Pauli operators. The evolution operator is just the corresponding rotation operator. Two qubit Hamiltonians. Now consider the situation when Hamiltonian consists of some Pauli operators applied to two qubits. Let's start with the Hamiltonian formed by two Z operators. Here and further in this video the subscript denotes the sequential number of the qubit. This operator looks as follows, and the square of this operator is the unit matrix. Therefore, to calculate the evolution operator for a given Hamiltonian, we can use the formula for the decomposition of the matrix exponential. Now, we rewrite everything in matrix form and use the formula for the exponential notation of a complex number. Thus, we have obtained an operator which is referred to in the literature as RZZ and appears, for example, in the Quava algorithm. Our goal is to construct a quantum circuit that implements this operator. To do this, we first look at how the RZZ operator acts on some state vector with normalized coefficients. Therefore, after some matrix vector multiplication, we get the following line. Here we can take the global phase factor out of the bracket. So basically the evolution under the Z Hamiltonian is a simultaneous rotation of two qubits around the Z axis. From the result we just received, one can see that the phase shift applied to the system is e to the power of minus i theta half if the parity of the qubits in the computational basis is even, in other words, when both qubits are either 0 or 1. Otherwise, the phase shift should be e to the power of i theta half. Thus, for the simple simulation of ZZ Hamiltonian, we need to do the parity check, then apply a phase shift conditioned on the parity, and then uncompute. So, this is our initial state. First, we classically compute the parity using the C0 gate. The result is stored in the second qubit. If the parity is even, its value is 0, and 1 otherwise. Afterwards, we apply an appropriate phase shift conditioned on the parity using RZ gate. Finally, we uncompute the parity, bringing the second qubit back to its original state. This strategy works for an arbitrary number of Z operators in the Hamiltonian. Before we continue, let me prove that this quantum circuit does indeed correspond to the evolution operator we need. To do this, we are going to use a C0 operator written in the following form, where cat0 bra0 and cat1 bra1 are the operators presented on the screen. We will now find out which operator is implemented by this quantum circuit. The C0 gate, rotation of the second qubit around the z-axis, and another C0 gate. First, we substitute the expression for the C0 gate and replace the rotation gate with another representation. From here on, unless the tensor product sign is used, all products are ordinary products of matrices. Now, multiply the expression in the second bracket by the third. Then, open the braces, taking into account 
that Zx is equal to Iy in accordance with the algebra of the Pauli matrices. We can simplify this expression even more by replacing xy with iz and double x with the identity operator. Afterwards, we group the terms with the cosine t and sine t. Finally, one can notice that z2 is multiplied by another z operator acting on the first qubit. And this is how we end up with the expression for the RZZ operator. We can now move on to the other two qubit Hamiltonians, which have operators X and Y. In order to construct quantum circuits to simulate evolution under the action of such Hamiltonians, we will need the following identities. They allow to express some quantum gates through others using a basis change. Here, Ry is the rotation around y-axis, h is a Hadamard gate, Rx is the rotation around the x-axis, and hy is the following operator. Let's calculate the evolution operator for the Hamiltonian xz and try to construct a quantum circuit for it. The tensor product of x and z is a self-inverse matrix. Therefore, we can decompose this matrix exponential. Then, we can use the identity for x gate and get the following line. Since the Ry operator is unitary, we can take it out of the bracket. The superscript 1 of Ry gate denotes a qubit number. Thus, we got the RZZ operator in a shell of rotation operators. So, to construct a corresponding quantum circuit, it is enough just to apply Hadamard or Ry gates to the first qubit on both sides of the quantum circuit for the RZZ operator. It's easy to show that the same approach works for any position of the X or Y operators in the Hamiltonian. Therefore, to simulate the evolution under XX Hamiltonian, we just apply Hadamard gates on both sides of RZZ operator. And for YY Hamiltonian, we wrap everything into Rx gates. Multiple qubit Hamiltonians. Extending the same procedure allows simulating exactly the Hamiltonians consisting of an arbitrary tensor product of Pauli operators. For example, applying the same logic regarding the parity and phase shift, as we did for RZZ operator, we can construct the quantum circuit to simulate the Hamiltonian formed by the tensor product of four Pauli Z operators. It can be shown that this quantum circuit is equivalent to the one with the ladder of C0 gates. Another example. Hamiltonian consists of three Pauli operators x, y, and z. In this case, we should add the transformation to the first and the second qubits in the quantum circuit for RZZZ operator. One more example. Using the decomposition of the matrix exponential and identities for the Pauli matrices, we can get the following equation. And this means that we should apply the operators in the squared braces to the corresponding qubits before and after the evolution operator for Hamiltonian with three Z matrices.